Hi guys, Borgio here, back with another guide, this time for the Farsi's Distillery Rum Cellar Solo Instance. So this is another puzzle instance, a bit like Unrest was back in the day. And I had a few requests for this one, because it can be fairly confusing what to do. Um, what with the guards throwing you in jail and have to avoid the guards. So I'm running this on my Inquisitor. This is actually my second run through of this dungeon. I ran a quick fact finding one before I did this one. But I don't get spotted by the guards at all. But if you do, I'll show you where the jail is. It's quite easy to get out and get back to where you were. Just follow along. Technically, you only need to kill roughly one mob in here to finish the zone. But uh, I, I kill three. I kill four, actually. I kill four. So I'll show you the, what I do. So basically, hug this left wall as you come around here. You'll avoid the pack on the right. And you're looking, basically, on the map, the, the lifts are the little brown squares. You want the first lift. Now, with a lot of lifts in these games, you'll have to learn. You need to right-click buttons to get them to actually give you lots of options. Um, I'm not sure what I was checking for there. Oh, yeah. My bit of advice. Bring something which gives you run speed just to do this. So deadly saber-tooth totems, generally a good idea. If you're a speed class anyway, then you'll be fine. But yeah, whatever you can do to minimize your run, standstill, slow run, oh, it's horrible. Anyway, first elevator you get to, hit the top floor. And what we need to do is we need to actually go and speak to the NPC that's in the rooms. Now, this is your first experience with a patrolling guard, just hit what it should be. What you want to do, grab this torch from on top of this brazier. You're going to need that later. Now, run along these rocks. You can see the patrolling guard near where those guys are talking. Now, I like to run across and sit behind this rock. This is the way you're intended to do this section. You're supposed to wait until these guards fall asleep, and then you can run past them. However, the easiest strat will be shown to you as we exit here. So we never need to deal with these guards again. And as you can guess, you just need to kill them. If you kill these two guards, they're never going to... Uh, you don't have to wait for them to fall asleep constantly. So eventually, they're going to drop to the floor. There we go. So what you can do is you go through the door. My personal opinion here is I like to go first person for this patrolling guard in this room. Just check if he's on the right. If he's not, there he is. Hit behind these crates and just check your camera to make sure he's run past. The general range is uh, to get spotted is aggro range. As we come up here, first person again, you want this door to the right. There is a patrolling guard that walks there, but there she is, she's on the left. So head straight in and talk to the NPC. I will quickly, rapidly click through the text. Um, when you're doing it, feel free to read. It's quite a funky story, you're getting this guy drunk. But he says, get him some rum and he'll give us a key. So to get the rum, we're going to head back out. Now, I've got very lucky there as I was going a bit too fast and didn't get spotted. But as we come down, uh, I think I'm close again. Yeah, there's the patrolling guard. I thought, oh, she's had me for sure. She didn't. Have a quick check. These two are awake again, so what I do, just pull them into the corridor, fight them in the middle of the corridor, kill them off. You never have to deal with them again. You never have to let them go to sleep or whatever. They don't imprison you. Um, they're, they're dead easy. So just kill these off, and we're going to get the first bottle of the rum. Now, the first bottle of the rum is actually up this top area, but it's guarded by two patrolling guards, which you cannot sneak past. So you have to deal with the mechanics the game wants you to do to get them. So I will show you what they are. Head out, check the patroller guard is nowhere near, and I like to go back onto the rocks. You don't need to, as long as it's far enough away. Now what you're doing is these crates that are on the right-hand side here, you can select them. Um, grab one. If you're lucky, you can do this with one. If not, you'll need to come back and get another one, and take it to the lift. So I'm just going to wait for the patrolling guard. I've been caught here before. Jump through. I thought I got stuck and was going to fall off here, but managed to make it across. Now what you want to do is put this barrel as far forward as you can on the lift. Now, that's a good spot there. I go back and grab another barrel, because sometimes the patrol paths of the two wandering guards on that sort of bridge area are, aren't together. So you're only going to get one at a time. However, I got really lucky with these barrels and actually managed to kill both guards with one barrel. But bring another one over anyway, and I, I just set it here. So what you're doing is you're waiting now for the guards to come up the path, and I saw here they were both coming together and thought, actually, this is going to work out really well. And when they get close to the barrel, the barrel goes, pssst, and then explodes, and it blows them off the bridge, and you can go down and get the rum. If you only caught one of them, that's why you brought the second barrel over. But uh, I move in a little bit closer so you can see the barrel gets some yellow sparks, then they go red, and there they go. Both guards in one go, so I was super happy with that. I run down, and you're going to get into this first sort of rummy area. You can, you can see the glow of what you need. Uh, grab that bottle and you're taking it back to the dude in the room. Same same as before, just avoid the guards. If you get captured, you get captured. So what? Nothing happens. Uh, you get hit for a little bit and then you get put in prison and you have to break out. It's all good. I have had this instance bug once. Uh, on my fact-finding run, I got put in prison, but the door was not clickable and I was stuck in combat, so I had to use uh, evac to get, out, get away. So yeah, not, not ideal. 
Always make sure you give these guards a, a wide berth, guys. You don't want to be getting caught. There's an extra achievement for doing this without getting spotted at all, which I actually get at the end of the run. Spoilers. Um, and there's also an achievement for pulling off all the mechanics on the final boss correctly. So here we are back in here. So we're going to give him this alcohol. He's like, yeah! Now, here's a key. He goes, get me some more alcohol, and I'll give you another key. And you're like, oh, all right, fine, whatever. But uh, this one, this one's a sneaky one. It gave us what was called the um, boiler's key. But it doesn't actually activate the boiler lift. The boiler lift you cannot use from the ground floor, which is very, very weird. Um, if you send the lift, to, if you send the boiler lift to the ground floor, you then can't come back up on it. So very weird. What I'm doing here is waiting for the patrolling guard because I saw her go past. So my advice with this, what you want to do with this one first, the first thing you need to do. God, how many times am I going to say that? I don't know. Um, we've got to distract a load of guards first before we can actually go to the boiler area. So what we're going to be doing is setting a trap. So we're going to be going back to the first lift we used, and we're going to go down. Um, two floors, or we might even go down one floor, I can't remember what I do. But what we're going to be doing is setting all the rum loose from those two, two levels, and then we're going to set it on fire, which is why we've got that torch. Now, the usable items in this zone are weapons, and they go in your weapon slots, so when you've used one, remember to re-equip your other stuff, otherwise you're going to start fighting the final boss with uh, nothing equipped. So. With these two floors here, one of them has patrolling guards, which is this first floor here, and the next one down doesn't. So what you're looking for is clickable barrels. There's three on this top floor, and I'm going to get the first two and then do the next floor. There we go. And then there's two on the floor below. Oh, there might be six, actually. Let's find out. There's three on that floor for sure. I, I always leave one to last just in case I get captured, because it's an awkward one. Uh, here we go on this floor, so just mouse over the barrels. It's generally the ones at the top, sort of, or the ones turned on their side, because you're going to tap them. So there's that one. In fact, there's three. There's six. There's three on each level. There's this one. And then there's a bit of a gap, which is uh, a bit weird. And it's, I think I've run past it, have I? No, it's this one here. There we go. That's the three on this floor. I check over here just to be sure, but it's only the ones lying on their side, and it's only three per floor. So we've got these three. The next one, the last one, sorry, is on top. Now, I'm looking for the torch in my bag, and it's actually in my weapon bag, I find it, there we go. So I've equipped the torch, go up one floor, and we need to get the last barrel. Now this is quite far along the way, and it is at the limit of one of the patrol uh, points for the, for the guards. You can see it on top there. So what you need to do is basically get there as quickly as possible, hit it, and then back up as fast as possible as well. There we go, I made it. Get to the smoke. When you light this, jump immediately into the water, because you're going to start taking percentage-based tick damage. It, it, in fact, it's not. It's just a shit ton of damage. So what you've done now is you've distracted the guards. I'll show you what not to do first, um, and then what to do. So first of all, you think, ah, oh, great, cool, the walkway's lift is activated. So hit this one. If you ride this to the top, you'll be spotted by guards immediately and sent to, uh, sent to jail. So I demonstrate here. I go up to the first floor just to just to show you that you can. And this first floor is the one that's on fire. It's just around that corner. So what you want to do, I, I, send it, I start to send it and think, actually, no, 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 there's guards up there. So what you want to do, run past that lift and get to this one here. And this is the, the heating vats, I think it's called. So drop this one down and then ride this one to the top. And you'll actually see all the guards have sort of moved out of this area and are now watching that fire which is why if you rode that that lift to the top you were going to get spotted so here we go we're at the vats you can see all the guards over there and they're at, literally at the lift now there's nothing else here so run across to the right and go to this next lift and call this one to your floor and then ride this one to the top i think honestly the the hardest thing about this whole instance is knowing where to go to start with obviously quite annoying um, and then just getting back to the original NPC to talk to him. Uh, that's the most annoying bit. Right. Next little section. You, the, the parrot tells you what to do, guys, if you listen to him. But if you just follow this guy, it's easy enough. Right. I'm looking for the mob. There's a mob that patrols from left to right. He's on the left. Run to this table and grab the wrench. Equip the wrench as a weapon. There we go. And now what you want to do is, as the NPC walks in front of these things, click these and run. Immediately run. What you're going to do is it opens up the vat, blows the steam at the NPC, and then he will immediately run round and re-tighten the bolts that you've just loosened. If you don't immediately run, he'll spot you, get put in jail, blah, blah, blah. Now, 
after he's used one, after you've used one and he's tightened it, you can't then use that one again for a while. Because it would be great if you could just run around and hit him now. But you've got to hit him with four of them. Um, I actually mess up thinking about this. I hit him with this next one. I think I miss with the next one. So the third one I think I miss him with. But here we go. Get him roughly the right position. Turn and run. This is why we got. it's nice to have the speed. So he comes around and goes, oh, God, what is going on? And all this lot. And he tightens the stuff. Um, he's actually carrying the rum that we need to give to the NPC for the next um, next key. So it's just about waiting for him. This is the, the thing I've noticed with this puzzle instance itself. There's a lot of standing around, a lot of waiting. Um, however, I'm not going to speed up this footage at all, guys. I'm going to leave it as is. So you can see it only took me about half an hour, I think, this time to get through it. You know, RNG was very kind to me with a, with a lot of stuff. Now, I missed this one. I should have clicked this earlier. Look, I've set it off. And he, he's not even bothered. He's actually just tightening it now. So I was like, uh, well, that's annoying. So I'm like, fair enough. I'll hit him with this one. And then it won't take long for him to turn around. So, yeah, I did, I did miss. But fair enough. Whatever. Get on with it. Click that one. It didn't actually work. See, I hit it too early. But if you come back, you keep spam clicking it. Eventually... It will go, you'll, you'll be able to use it again. There we go. And I just catch him with it there. Just catch him. You can tell because you can see the speech bubble come up. And you can also hear him shout stuff when you activate it. So he's literally got one more in him. You'll know he's got one more in him when he says he thinks he, uh, he's not feeling so good. Like he says there. So I'm going to get him with this last one. Now, interesting little thing happens when you, when you do the last one. Is it spawns his body on the floor. But the game doesn't immediately remove him from the game. So his body's also on the floor while it's also walking away. So just be aware. Give it time for him walking away to disappear before you go around the corner. Also let the steam dissipate. Uh, I'm not sure if you run into the steam if it hurts you too badly. But uh, I imagine it does. Um, Daybreak have probably made it so it hurts you. But here we go. I'm going to click this one. Got him. And there it's fell down look. But he's also still walking. So we just wait for him to stop disappear there we go go around the side and we're going to grab the rum from his body and take it back to the npc again at this particular point you're about halfway through this is probably the most fiddly section i, I don't know i don't want to call them bosses because they're not bosses but the most fiddly section my favorite thing to do always when you jump off guys aim for the water if you if you hit the land you're going to take some full damage I, it shouldn't shouldn't kill you if you fall from the top level i don't think but just aim hit the water anyway there are mobs in the water like little um anglerfish but just it doesn't matter. They can't come on land. Not like in uh, early release days when fish could come on land. And it was very, very comical. If anybody remembers that, hit a like on this video. And save, put a comment if you remember those days. With uh, Spirit Shard runs as well. God, those were fun. Anywho, this is... Um, not the No, there's one more time we need to visit this NPC. You can see the fire we set there. Whoops, little arsonist that we are. So the NPC patroller still need to be aware of her. But as you can see, the sleeping guards are still not not respawned. That's fantastic. So go up. And as usual, we're going to check, check, check. He's literally just gone left. So this time I'm going to go around this way. And as he goes to the left, you can just sort of run around him um, up the stairs. Now, if you if this top one is in a bad position, which isn't this time, and you need to sort of wait in the corridor, wait in the center of the corridor. If you go too low, the guy in the bottom room can spot you. So here we go, we're going to give him this stuff, and he says, oh cool, well if you go and get me this last bit of ale, I'll give you something good. Now we don't know what that is, so we said, okay sure, we'll go and get it, why not, we're already doing pretty well on this. But this, this one's really easy to get, this is the super easy one. So, now you've got this key, what you actually want to do is, it's the lift directly opposite the first one we use, so we're really close to it here. But I actually mess up, and start running the wrong way. But if you're not a noob like me, just jump off the top, and swim uh, to the west. And it's the lift just to the west of where we are now. Um, however, I start running around the bottom and going, no, 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 this is not right. So jump over the fire, land in the water. And I should have turned around here and gone west. But I start running this way. And then I figure out, hang on a sec, it's not this way. Eventually, I figure this out. After I start targeting all the lift buttons. Oh, my God. I can't believe I ran all this way. Yeah, this, this was a mistake. I realized that. I'm like, oh, God, yeah, it's the one over here. So don't do what I did directly do what i do on the, on the spits that matter don't do what i do when i'm running the wrong way um the next section is the sugar cane area um there's only one mob you need to worry about 
basically. Here's the sugarcane lift. Call it down, and then we're going straight to the top floor again. You can go to the middle floor if you want to see the NPC you're about to burn, but there is really no point. Just go straight to the top. Do -do 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 -do. Right, as you come up here, there is one mob, which is an orange con, and he is currently fiddling with the machine. He doesn't seem to move, or he hasn't moved whenever I've done this, but he's on the left-hand side there. So just run around the right, and then as you come around this corner, there's a lever on the wall. Click the lever, and it's going to dump stuff on the NPC. You can actually see him scream, and then use this lift, you can see the text box now, bottom right, to go down. And so he throws himself in the water which stops him patrolling around this area, it means we can get this last little bit. Turn around on the left, head this way, and here's the crate. And this is the last time you need to go back and speak to that first NPC. In fact, you're about uh, two-thirds slash three-quarters of the way through this whole, whole zone now, guys. It's not super long. Maybe it is the first time. Um, I didn't test actual stealth to see if these things see through stealth. I imagine they would. Why would they not? Um... I'm sure that I'm sure they do. Otherwise, it makes too much advantage to stealth classes or anything with uh, stealth on. But maybe they don't. Oh, I get attacked by a fish here. Look, literally. So just step on the land, and he's like, "Yeah, okay, you win this round." But last time, here we go. Um, this was this was the point I was thinking. God, I could probably get the uh, not spotted achievement here. I figured I could get it now because as long as I don't get spotted at all on this little bit, which is this bit here is the bit where I normally get spotted the most, is just jumping across these rocks because this NPC is a, a cowbag at seeing me. But I make it past her quite happy and I just hit my first person again. Just check, check. He's coming back. And I, I'm thinking, what shall I do? I see he goes. It's, uh, that was very dangerous. But uh, I made it. I made it through. We'll check the top one. And she is currently coming. So what you want to do is you want to hit, hit a roughly around halfway into this corridor and just sort of hang. Okay. If you start to see her nameplate, stop. But come, come right in the middle. She will, she'll walk to the corner and then she'll go back. So when a few, a few seconds have passed, look back up. There she goes. Could be a boy in your instance. I don't know. Every time I got captured, the actual race of the and sex of the guards changed. So I'm not sure. Uh, if this if it's coded to respawn stuff on that, but here we go. He says he's going to give us something good. In fact, he gives us nothing. He complains and falls asleep. But we can loot his bag, and in his bag is another key and some explosive ordnance. And you just need to select one appearance thing for your house. So I just took the crate, whatever. Now, this is the last time we had to speak to him, so we can get out of here now. And we've got the final the final key, which is actually over by the jail. I know it's not called the jail, it's like the office or whatever it is, but it's the, where you spawn if you get captured. So we're going to come down, we're going to leap over the fire, as always, and we're going to head our way down to the sort of southwestern lift, and it's the final one we're going to use, and then we will soon be on the boss. So, yeah, it, it's, it was quite fun to do this. The first time, it was, I, I didn't use any guides for this, I did it myself. Which is quite, I think, is always the fun way to do it the first time. But if you are struggling, that's what this video guide is here for. Um, just to give you a quick nudge. You, you know, you don't have to watch the whole thing. You can just skip to the sections you need. But, yeah, good, good effort from Daybreak. At least giving us another puzzle instance, which you can't just herp de derp brute force through. So, final lift. This one can only go to one floor. So, you just go straight up to the top. And this area is near the jail. I'm actually going to show you the door. So uh, that door over there is where you take get if you get captured. So what you need to do if you get captured, click the door, do some speech bubbles, kill the guy, and then jump over. What you do here is it actually shows you. Grab four barrels and take them all to that particular point over here. Um, they could be, they're all just in this general area. So grab these four barrels. There's one more. Uh, it's there. And then what you do is you examine the barrels. I actually look for the torch in my inventory thinking I need the torch again. But you don't use the explosives you got. I'm like, oh yeah. Right click, set explosive charge, and then run away. I like to run just over here onto this bit of land here. And what this is going to do is it's going to draw all the guards from the central platform across. Okay, so that's what we need to happen. So that goes off. What you do is run over here to where those two d dead guards are. And on the right hand one, you're going to loot a grappling hook. Turn back around and then all of this sort of wall is climbable. Click to climb this. And you want to equip your grappling hook now and then click these shinies. I click them first and it just shows you you can look over at the hut. But equip your grappling hook first. And then you can shoot a grapple. Uh, remember to re-equip your, your bow guys if you're, a, if you're a range class or whatever. 
and then click the rope to slide down and you are now at the final boss who has some strats. So just before we go, I'm going to stick up an infographic on the page now and I want you guys just to, just to look at it because it's going to tell you what you need to know. Okay guys, so the main thing on this boss is she is going to become immune to damage, drink some rum from one of her bottles, and you need to drink the rum that matches the one she drinks in order to damage her. If you don't, you'll gain a debuff which does like 10% max hit point damage on you, and she's immune to damage for 20 seconds. So the, the thing on the screen shows you what you need to drink. So you're going to see she does text above her head so she says stuff like oh yeah i'm gonna drink this one or this reminds me of home or whatever and also you get blue text in your chat box so both the blue text and her text is in this little chart you can see and it tells you which rum you need to drink around the room so here we are guys final little bit then so hopefully that infographic is going to help you um, with this boss make sure you've got it jotted down or committed to memory or just work it out the bottles are all around the room I go pretty quick on this one and I think I only get two or three bottles of rum that I need to do so she's she is technically the final boss but you can also fight the parrot afterwards spoilers so here she goes she's gonna run off to drink so I like to look above her head so she says ah oh, those were the days so we run around and we find what uh, the the fool's royal cask which is over here so the blue text actually says in honor of jesters and pranksters or something Thing like that so you, you can drink the right rum and you can damage her straight away so that's what we want to do um so there's only six of them and they're, they're dotted around the room they're always in the same they seem to always be in the same places every time you do the zone i.e they were in the same type the same places the first time i did the zone when i got all my notes and they were in the same spots this time as well so i thought about letting her do all six to let you see them and i thought no i'll just put this that graphic on the screen to help you guys out but here we go. We're getting there. She's going to do another one. It looks like she only manages to do two. Here we go. Drinks are on me. I think this is... She actually says, may she never fail and forever set sail. Yeah, here we go. So this one is in honour of her ship, the ship that brought her here. And it's here, the seafaring lady. Drink that. And you have finished, technically, the, the, the solo instance, guys. Grats. Super, super simple, really, once you know what you're doing. Um, and just avoid those guards, really. But the instance technically isn't over. Because what happens now, the guy you've been dealing with will pop up and he will start spamming you with chat. And he tells you that basically he has no longer need of you. Um, to show you the rewards there, I grabbed, I just grabbed the first flurry cloak that's there. And he says he'll let the parrot deal with you. So I just grab all that, grab this loot. I don't use my shinies, I never do. Um, on this character anyway. So we're going to wait for him to finish his exposition and then we're going to fight the parrot. So the parrot's fairly easy, but he's got a few little strats you need to worry about. But my advice is, always face north when fighting this guy, which is the way we're facing now. So if you imagine the wall in front of us is the north wall, there's no door. So that means the door to the left is the west, the door to the right is the east, and the door behind us is the south. The reason you need to know this is because throughout the fight, the parrot will say something like, um, he prepares to smash himself around the room, and he actually puts death like portals behind two of the doors. If you open a wrong door, it's not the end of the world. You can't go out of the room if you're by that door. Um, but an, a zombie skeleton, zombie thing ad will spawn. So just avoid that. And being in the room gets you smashed to bits by the parrot. So just run outside. So we're going to kick him a few times. I, I thought he was done, but I kick him one last time. Here we go. Face north. And uh, yeah, just break him down. Apart from those, those little bits, he doesn't do any dots, he doesn't do anything you need to cure or really worry about. In fact, the damage is generally low from him. Uh, I zoom out, and so all you're watching for is there's a red text message which tells you which doors are the bad doors. So you just pick the one it doesn't say. So here we go. He does the first one fairly quickly into the fight after a few seconds. There we go. So I have to go west, so I grab this door. It opens, you walk outside, and it says in your text box, which you can't see, um, you get a breath of fresh air. Then all you do, just wait out here. You can see him bombing around the room inside. Just wait. He'll teleport you back inside when it's done. So don't even have to guess when to go in. Just wait. And then it's rinse repeat till he's dead. Um, I think I only do one more round of doors. When you first come in, he might be stuck in the ceiling a little bit. So just give him a wiggle to get him down, and you can get your melee going again if you, uh, if you need to. Other than that, guys, this that's this instance in a nutshell, really. Uh, there's not much else to really say. It's, uh, yeah, it was super fun to actually do one which involved puzzles and thinking and logic and not having everything laid out for you um, the first time. Anyway, so here we go. I'm going to go out the east door this time. 
But as usual, guys, if you like my guides, you like this sort of thing, leave a leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know what you want me to cover. But uh, heroics are probably out at the moment. I haven't got time to do them when I'm not raiding. So as normal, guys, with EverQuest stuff, comment, like, subscribe. I'm Borgio. I'll see you guys next time.